welcome everyone to the 75th International Youth Congress of the Church of God in Christ Jesus Apostolic. And today is day two, and we're so excited to be here to be a part of this conversation. We know that this year's Youth Congress is just a tad bit different than what we normally are used to, um, but that's okay because we are expecting God to do some exceptional things um, this year. Before we get started, we're going to ask, I would say, Brother Corey, do you mind going ahead and lead us, us in a quick word of prayer? Yes, let's pray. Father, thank you again. Thank you for this time. Thank you for this gathering of saints. This may be different as our new presidents have already said, this may be different, but God, we know that wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And you give us freedom to do the things necessary that the church may grow, that your people may be edified. So we ask, oh God, that you bless this meeting in the name of Jesus. And however, in whatever capacity that we have this meeting, let your spirit be near us and let your spirit empower us and let people be blessed. Let lives be changed. Let people be provoked unto the things of God. In Jesus' name, we'll be forever to give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So this year, um, for this meeting, our theme is the year of the open door. So when you think about this, you realize that when a door is open, you can either go in or you can go out. As we go through our activities this week, some doors should, some doors we should see ourselves as going in and other doors going out. We will remain, we remind you of the Bible character that was used, the open door we are discussing at every planned event. So tonight we're talking about going forth. So think about the open door as going out. Today's character is going to be Esther. If you think about Esther, Chapter four, verse nine through 17, it says, Esther showed how courage can save a nation and how coming forth or going out of an open door in spite of adversity can change the course of history. We want to thank Sister Yolanda for providing us with that Bible character connection. On tonight, the theme is the year to come forth and that's from Acts chapter five, verse 18 through 20 and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, go stand and speak in the temple to the people, all the world, all the words of, the, of his life. So today we're gonna go ahead and get started. And we're going to be talking about the importance of the music ministry within our local assemblies. Before we get started, we're gonna go ahead and let everyone introduce themselves. So as a facilitator tonight, my name is Sister Hannah Wilson, and I am from Deliverance Temple Church of the Apostolic Faith, located in Chicago, Illinois. And at Deliverance Temple, I am currently in charge of the music department. So I'm going to have each one of you all introduce yourself. Please provide us with your name, your church, and your position in the church within the music ministry. We can start with Sister Miriam. <laughs> my, praise the Lord. My name is Sister Miriam William, and my church is St. Paul Church of God in Christ Jesus Apostolic, and my position in the church is the Minister of Music. Thank you. Who would like to go next? I, can, I guess so. Um, oh. Go ahead, Brother Corey. Okay. Uh, I am uh, Brother Corey Ramsey, or in my church, they call me Minister Corey Ramsey, so I guess I should say that today. Um, I am from the Southeastern District of the Church of God in Christ Jesus Apostolic. We have two churches, uh, the Rehoboth Church of God in Christ Jesus Apostolic, as well as New Jerusalem Church of God in Christ Jesus Apostolic, where my pastor is Bishop Gus Carr Jr. Um, and also, if I may, I just want to give honor to our youth president and the person of evangelist uh, Diggs, and of course, our, our uh, presiding bishop and, and the person of Bishop Harry R. Wilson. And I'm Thank glad you. to be here. Thank you. Hello, my name is Brother Henri Hector. I am from out of Baltimore, the Emmanuel Apostolic Faith Church of Ridgewood, where Pastor Overseer Adrian C. Barnes, praise the Lord. And um, I am the Minister of Music. And um, I'm not in charge of our department, but Brother Carlos Mack is in charge of our music department. And uh, all honor and glory goes to God. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. 
Well, I am so excited to have this conversation with you all, and we're going to go ahead and get started. So I think the question on the table is, I would say, discuss how important music is in worship. So when you think of worship, how important is the music component when we worship, especially in church? Who would like to take a stab at that? I guess I'll take a stab at it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, music in the house of God is very important because we usher in and set the mood for worship. It's important that all minds are geared and focused on our abilities to usher in the presence of God through music. We understand that through the theory of music, that it cultivates and, and it captures the heart and the minds of the individuals and gear them towards our heavenly father. So music is, is essential, it's important because you know we know that you know when David was uh, playing for King at the time, King Saul, you know, his spirit was perplexed in him. But when David played his instrument, it calmed the spirits within. So, you know, it is important that we have our uh, instruments ready. It's important that we gear our minds and our hearts to worship because we usher in uh, and welcome the spirit of God and gear everybody mind towards worship. Thank you. Anybody else has any thoughts on the importance of worship in music in the church? I, I would add to that as well. I, I agree uh, wholeheartedly. Um, we usher in, we, we take people, uh, one preacher said, to the feet of Jesus. Um, and so that, that, is our, that is our job. But one of the things I saw too, when I looked at that question, uh, it says, uh, what's the importance of music in worship? And I, and I kind of added something too. I said, what's the purpose of worship in worship? Because even as musicians, if it's just music that we're doing, then we may not get the need met. But if we are worshiping as a worship leader, sometimes we, we have to try to pump and prime people. But if we just worship when we're playing, when we're singing, whatever we do in our, in our music, we are able to uh, usher them even quicker because we have a relationship or, or what we say in the Southeastern District, we have a fellowship with the one that we are, we are, we are proclaiming. And so worship, in worship, when we when we worship, we 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 are able to lead them because if we're just doing it out of exercise and futility, the need won't be met. I agree. I definitely agree with that. That we have to set the tone before we have anybody else want to worship. We have to make sure that we're worshiping ourselves. I definitely agree with that. Sister Miriam, did you want to add to that? Yes. When I think about the importance of music and worship, um, I think about how um, music in the house um, changes the atmosphere, it sets the atmosphere. Um, music and worship is one tool that is used to pull the congregation together and to um, unite them. And then it is also used to then move that congregation into a posture of, um, Tell, sending God a message with one voice. Um, as worship is going up and as music is going up, the congregation is talking to God with one voice and they're telling God how they feel about him. They could be raising up um, music of Thanksgiving. They could be raising up music of um, celebration. They could be raising up music, telling God how much they love him. They could be raising up some music of telling God how available they are and how they want to be used. So music um, and worship is very important because it sets the tone. It sets the atmosphere. It makes things easier as you progress during the service. If it's, if it, if it's set right, it makes things easy. It makes things flow. So a question that just came up to me is, do you all think that we can effectively worship without music? Yes, well, <laughs> and I think that that answer is, it has, there's different answers. I, I would say yes, because um, if you're like me, a lot of times when you grew up in the apostolic church, a lot of times we didn't, we didn't have music, but we definitely worship. And if you, if you grew up, we grew up like us, you grew up Pentecostal, can't nobody have church like we have church. 
And so definitely there is a way to do it. But if we look at scripture, everywhere there was effective worship, there was music. Music, music was made to invoke the presence of Jesus. And so, yes, it, yes, it is possible because sometimes you're in your living room. Right now I'm sitting in, in my living room. I may not have a Hammond B3 with me. I may not have my, that's my primary issue. I may not have my saxophone. I may not have anybody uh, playing. I may not have anybody singing, but there is a sound out of me that even a keyboard can't give. There is a sound out of the believer that a Hammond B3 won't be able to give. And so absolutely it is, it is possible, but it does not negate the fact that music is needed. And according to the scripture, music was used to invoke the presence of Jesus. Okay. I definitely agree. Um, music is, is to me, music is necessary because again, just like the minister said, it provokes uh, uh, to put you in a state where, you know, when you worship and you start praying and, you know, it, it puts you in a frame of worship and you start to sing. So, you know, music to me, and in, in my view, it goes hand in hand. In my view, you can, yes, you can uh, praise God without the music. Because I hear people, many people say, you know, we don't need no music. We got the Holy Ghost. And, and, and you know, I agree to it to a certain level. However, if you're praising God and giving God the glory, it puts you in a state of you have to you have to praise him and and the orchestra. It has to go on. You know, everywhere you go in the scripture, just like the minister said, they were praising God, not only with their mouth, but they were praising God with their instruments, whether it be clapping of the hand. That's a form of music right there. But there was there was things that were orchestrated to give out an uh, invitation to to the cause. Praise the Lord. I think um, when I see it and I think about it and I think about your question, I don't think we can worship without music because um, music um, can be in different forms. Um, music can be um, expressed vocally. Music can be expressed instrumentally. Um, you can sing in your spirit. Your spirit can sing. Your heart can sing and you're not hearing anything, but that's that is still music um, and it's still sending a message to God. And I also don't think that we can worship without music because I think that God is very deliberate and is too detailed in the Bible of how music is used. Um, David was so serious about being skilled in his craft. And when it was time for that temple, when that temple was to get set up with the service to be rendered, he was so strategic as to how he set up that music ministry. Mm -hmm. 288 people strong and, they, and nobody's position or duties overlapped. So if you couldn't, if, you, if we couldn't worship without music, I don't think he would have put that much time into it. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we can worship without music because music is wow. in so many different forms. Oh, can, I add, can I add something as well to that? That that can I add something if I may? Yeah, go ahead. That was a crown I almost laid out. <laughs> <laughs> you felt that. <laughs> and that because it's it's just like how she was talking about how David was strategic. Um and, and we we're gonna get down to the question of the chief musician, but how how that even kind of flows just the, the strategy of God. That's how anything we do in the house of God has an order. Mm. And, and his, if we maintain his order, you know, sometimes we say, we just gonna let the, the Holy Ghost move, let's let it do. But, but if we set order, God will bless it because he's a God of order. Another thing I would say is too, right. as worship leaders, we have to know when God wants to hear what he wants to hear. We, we may be in the middle of service and all of the, the whole band is playing, but what God wants to hear is, the, as Sister Miriam said, is the music that comes just from the voice. God may not want to hear the organ. He, he may want to hear strings on the keyboard. We have to be skilled enough in our craft and in our gift to know what's needed in the house at the time. 
to maintain that order and strategy of worship. I agree with the minister because you know that call that calls for a level of commitment, just like David, just like um, the evangelist was saying that you have to be skillful and put yourself in a zone where it, you know, you're just giving your best to God. And, and I like what the minister said, you know, uh, yeah, I have to agree. You know, you, you have to put yourself in a, in a, in a strategic situation and just, you know, worship. And, and I, you know, when I think about it, I just, I, just, I just think you can't have one without the other. You know, I really think that at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's what, what are you sacrificing? You're sacrificing that praise and, and you're putting your all into it. And that's just, this is my thought. So I think this is a great segue into the other question that we had that Miriam kind of already touched upon. And that question is talking about David and how he assigned individuals to be the chief musician. So does this speak to how, how important music is as far as the quality of music, like the quality of music that he expects? I was uh, absolutely. Ab absolutely. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Minister. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, that's, I would say absolutely. I would say absolutely because of the fact that sometimes when even how I grew up, uh, the saints will will make you feel like you you're the best. You know, they, sometimes they'll make you feel like you're the best. You could be playing one chord. You, you don't know many songs. I start out playing the congos in in church. Um, and by 15, I was playing, I was playing sax full time and even like traveling around. But the thing about it was what I had to learn was, is God wanted me to be anointed for sure. But yeah. he also wanted me to cultivate the gift. Uh, yes. The scripture says, stir up the gift that was given to you by the laying on of hands. Another scripture says, and a lot of times we are accredited to preaching but study to show thyself approved of God. It is vital, it is necessary that we cultivate the skill. And we see it, it's, it's evident, the chief musician, it speaks of the fact that there was the quality of skill because you can't be more anointed than me. When God filled me with the Holy Ghost, he filled you the same way because one of the, 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 the texts in Acts, it says, it was cloven tongues, meaning the fact that it was distributed equally. So when he gives you the anointing, you have the anointing just as I have, but we are skilled differently. We right. are skilled differently. And it has and it is to a point where there is a leader and we have to establish that leader. That is the leader because that leader's job is to make sure that we continue to cultivate our gift, but also that leader's anointing it is graced as he, he's able to see or she is able to see in the realm of the spirit a little further than we can. Though we have the same Holy Ghost, they are able to see a little further and able to guide and undergird what's going on in that music ministry. Amen. I definitely agree with the minister. Uh, there comes a level of you have to cultivate your gift. You can't, you can't get better just not doing anything. And if you're doing this for God, you got to give your all. I remember what Paul told Timothy, he told, even though he was studying the word, show thyself approved, a man not to be ashamed, but rightfully dividing the word of truth. I believe that applies to your craft. Praise the Lord. You, you have to study your instrument. You have to study and get in tune with what you're doing and know, understand that you're not just playing for anybody, that you are privileged to play for the Lord and his saints. So there comes a level of commitment. Praise the Lord. You got to commit yourself. You gotta put yourself into this. It's not about a show you're putting on. When I'm, I'm personally not in this for a show. I'm in this because I want to praise God with my instrument and the skill that He blessed me. He gave me gifts, and those gifts I have to cultivate and I have to show my gift to God and improving uh, according to His word. Praise Him. Um. I, I, I believe that um, this does speak to what God's expectation is about um, music and the quality of it. 
because when David um, set up the music um, organization and he designated the chief musicians, um, those chief musicians had a responsibility, as it was already said, to, to, to teach, to instruct, to perfect the craft, not only in themselves, but in the one, the musicians that they were leading. They were to make sure that um, they played skillfully. But the um, one of the most important things about the chief musician was the fact that they got their direction directly from David. And I'm going to equate that to as chief musicians or as ministers of music, we are supposed to um, keep ourselves in such a posture that we are able to hear the direction directly from God. In the middle of the song, he might want to take it somewhere different that you didn't rehearse with the choir. Mm -hmm. um, I've had that experience. He wanted to take that song somewhere I'm like, and in my head, I'm like, I haven't discussed that with the musicians. I haven't swung this past the choir. You know, you, you, you think about this sometimes, but in the middle of it, I went with the spirit and it worked. Mm -hmm. And it went over the way he wanted. So the chief musician, God's expectation is that when he wants to swing it left, when you taught it right, that you're going to swing left because that's your job. So I think he has a he has some extreme expectations of the chief musician as David did. Crazy. I like what you said, Evan. I like I love what you just said. That that was amazing because that takes humility. That takes humbleness to do that. And and it takes you being in the spirit. And, and that's just amazing right there. Uh, I'm reminded of a scripture. And the Bible says, as iron sharpens iron, so does a friend sharpen the continents of his friend. And that's what it's all about. It's about sharpening. It's about cultivating. It's, it's about helping one another to advance to another level in Christ. And that takes humility. So I appreciate what you just said. That, that, that resonates with me. So as you know, oh, can I jump in? I just want to, let me ask a question. Um, how, do, how do you, as ministers of music um, and those that have the lead of music in your church, how do you attune yourself with the desires of the pastor? And what happens if the pastor desires something that you may not even think you, that you're capable of? How do you do, how do, you do that? That was a kind of twofold well, question. Yeah. Um... Sometimes when I'm playing, because I'm not the one to charge, you know, Brother Carlos is, but, but sometimes when we have an agenda and the musicians know what they have to do and we're executing that and all of a sudden our pastor gets up and just totally in our, in our mind just throws a monkey wrench in what we're doing. It's like, what, what, what's going on? You know, did he just really do that? You know, that's not part of our agenda. And it happens, it, it really happens. And, and the question is, uh, what do we do? Do we go along with it or do we just continue to do our own thing? And I advise people, don't do your own thing. He's the pastor. So, you know, but, we, 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 but that happens. And when it happens, we, you know, we get back in line and we get back in We get back into our place. Okay, pastor's taking over. We have to understand that he's the leader of our church. If God's moving him in, the, in, in a certain direction, as far as the worship service or when he even comes to altar call, that we have to get in line and we have to be able on the fly to change the arrangements that we were originally arranged to do. We got to be able to be in the spirit, be obedient, praise the Lord, and, and follow suit. And if, if go ahead, Sister Mary, if you, I think you were talking first. Um, I think one of um, the ways that we um, align ourselves with our, our leader, our pastor, is, and I think it goes with one of the questions about how we prepare ourselves for worship. So uh, one of the ways that we, we align ourselves with our pastor is to, um, um, that's a part of our preparation for worship. And the, um, and the way we prepare ourselves to worship to be aligned with the pastor is that as a minister of music, you, we can't be missing in action 
and a lot of elements within the church as far as like sun, uh, Sunday school, Bible teaching, worship, even a, a fellowship where we're just eating. We can't be missing as ministers of music because that's how we align ourselves with our leader because in the middle of a Bible class, you're going to hear the sound of the house of the way the pastor is moving the church because they taught, they're teaching a whole lesson on love. So then as a minister of music, you know, you need to be moving in the mode of love. So your music needs to be touching love, needs to be touching that. that that's the way we align ourselves with our leaders is that we can't be missing in action. And that's why, too, that when the, even when the word when the word is being preached, we can't be missing. We can't be in the hallway, downstairs. We can't be outside drinking a, a soda and thinking we're going to come back in and be in tune because you didn't hear how the spirit is getting ready to move. So you, you, we align ourselves with our pastor by being there. Mm. And knowing what the voice of the house, it is important to know the voice of the house at all times, the sound of the house at all times. I, I was just thinking about it today, the sound of the house. I was talking to some musicians, I think maybe a week or two ago, every house has a different sound. And that, <laughs> and that goes a couple ways. How, how Sister Mary was, was talking about is, what, what are we teaching about? What, what's going on in Sunday school? Because we know, especially on a Sunday morning, that's, that's what starts out our, our services. What's going on in Sunday school? Even because if, if you're like me, uh, one of the things that I introduce to our church is to prepare for Sunday. So I, I, one of the things I, I, want us, I want us to implement is the fact that how we, we operate. So when we get up Sunday, it's not necessarily, unless the Lord gives a song of the Lord, we've prepared what song we're gonna sing so that it can be done in excellence. Yes. But as there's a lot of times where you have to connect. God, God wants to hear what he wants to hear and he knows what he's trying to do. And so you wanna connect with that. The other side of it is the sound of the house. Uh, you can't, uh, in, in this, uh, the sound of house in this fashion, uh, New Jerusalem in Orangeburg is not heel song. I can't go in New Jerusalem and try to create heel song Heal song, it works for them. That's their anointing. That's their sound. It's my job to find the sound of New Jerusalem, to find the sound of Rehoboth, in which we sing a lot of hymns. It's an, uh, it's an older traditional uh, kind of setting, kind of sound, and the glory falls. But it, it is the musician's job and the, and, and know this, as the pastor, what we have to learn as musicians is the pastor is the chief Levite in the house anyway. The pastor is the chief worship leader. Your ear has to be in tune to God, but know this, God's order is he's not going to lead you to do something that's out of alignment with your pastor. Um, that, that's, that, that was one of the things that I see now. My role at my church is kind of like the oversee. So in play, I'm, I'm kind of, saxophone is my primary instrument, but I play organ a little as well. But now I kind of just oversee the individuals that are playing now. And that was by word of my pastor. Did I understand it at the time, Evans Diggs? No, I did not. But when <laughs> pastor spoke, it was my job to align because what I have to understand is it doesn't matter how anointed I am or how gifted I may be. If I'm a, out of alignment with my pastor, the glory can't fall because he's the chief worship leader anyway. Amen. Amen. I, I like what you said, minister. And that goes back to being humble, right? Being humble and understand that at the end of the day, we are servants and we are serving. You know, I like, I like what you said, praise God. So Sister Miriam and Minister Corey both talked about preparation. So how do you all prepare weekly, both naturally and spiritually for worship at your local assembly? So I think that, I, well, I believe that the experience of a minister of music is so very similar to um, a preacher's experience. Because I think in preparation as a minister of music, you have to lay open at all times so that you can hear from God. You could be doing the 
course of the week, you could hear him in a commercial. You could hear him in a conversation and you have to be sensitive and open to hear him. I always start out by um, asking God, what God, tell me what you want to hear. So that's where I start. I say, God, I need you to tell me what you want to hear. And to go back to something that I've already said, like for instance, in a Bible class, I could hear my pastor um, quote three songs. And when she quotes those three songs, I'm going to write them down. Now that doesn't mean that's for Sunday, but I'm going to write them down. And God, is that what you want to hear? Keep, keep moving, keep directing me. So you, we have to be sensitive and, and, and make sure we hear from God and just always ask him, what does he want to hear? Because if you ask him what he wants to hear, he's going to tell you, he's going to answer. And believe me, you're going to see that's what he wanted to hear. Um, I definitely agree with Sister Miriam. It's being sensitive. I love that word, being sensitive, open and transparent to throughout the course of that week, you know, just paying attention to your surroundings and everything and allowing God to speak to you on a regular basis. It's just like preparing for a message. You know, our job is just as important. I believe it's just as important as the pastor's when he's delivering his message because we're delivering a certain sound, a, a level of worship to God. And there, and there has to be a preparation. There has to be um, a consecration period where you're setting yourself aside for the master's use so that you can hear from him. And, and not, not only that, but while you're listening, you're, you're, you're also in tune and studying in, in, in your craft. And like, like Sister Miriam said, just being open and sensitive, you know? So when that day comes, you, you're able to perform your duties as a servant and, and expect that even if it, even if you have an agenda, that you still got to be open just in case something does switch, that you're in tune with the spirit enough to, to flow with the switch or, or, or the change. Praise the Lord. Uh, I agree wholeheartedly with both of them. Um, I'm going to introduce a little something that's uh, another side of why we were, why we prepare as well. Know that most of our most of our churches now are on Facebook Live. We are streaming to the world. That's an evangelistic tool. Music, another, another reason why music is important is because usually they're gonna hear you sing first. Mm. They're gonna hear your music first. He that wins souls is wise. If we hadn't prepared anything, now we're on we're on Facebook Live, and we're making the joy to know, <laughs> you know, and we, what we have to understand. Now, don't get me wrong; every house has uh, the levels of musicianship. Certainly, we're we're not indicting people that are, are learning. Uh, Pastor Guy Barnes, I, I believe, said earlier today in, our, in the twelve o'clock session how that it was level to level how he, how he learned to play. Definitely, because those people are putting their best foot forward. We're just, I'm just stating the fact of the reason why we prepare. Know this, that a sinner may be watching and they may heard preaching all of their life and the preaching never pricked their heart. But you could be playing how great thou mm. art. You, you could be playing, take me to the king. The, the, the psalmist could be singing. We could be singing uh, 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 near the cross. And that is the moment that the center heart is pricked and the excellence and the skillfulness. One of the words uh, uh, that was used when David began to play was the fact that he was cunning. He was mad to uh, uh, deal as a master with music to, that it was noticeable. So that's another reason why we should prepare weekly and, and for every service of how we're, going to, how we're going to interact because somebody's soul might be at stake by our lack of pre preparation. I'm That's glad amazing. you brought that up. Cause I actually, I know I've been asking some questions that was not given to you all, but that was another question that I had on my paper was how important is music now that we are in more in a virtual setting? It's extremely yeah. important. Uh, music 
especially in a virtual setting, mm -hmm. people have the quick option to click off. Click off. <laughs> yeah. So most of the time, music Amen. is heard first. <laughs> and if the music is off, they're going to click off. <laughs> so it's very important because whether we want to believe it or not, music grows the church. It, 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 if you have an, a, a profound choir, a, an, um, a profound strategic perfected music ministry, people want to hear that. And on social media, as we um, utilize music, you want to be able to get the person to the preacher. Mm. So the only way to get them to the preacher because they have so many other options, they can go to a, another live or they can just turn it off and shut down for the day. Mm -hmm. If your music is perfected, if your music is right, if your sound is right, you're going to get them to the preacher. Your job is to get them to the preacher. Mm. Mm. Wow. <sighs> Honor, did you want to take a stab at that question? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, as much as it as it said, it, it's the God heaven truth because preaching doesn't happen until later on within the service. It's it to me. It's like your music. The music ministry is the first line of defense. I mean, let, let's be honest. It's the first line of defense. And, and it's so important that we take it seriously. You gotta rehearse, you gotta, like I said, perfect your craft, just like everybody's been saying tonight. Be sensitive. And not only that, but you you gotta be willing to do this thing. You know, you we everybody has hobbies and they put their whole foot forward in their hobbies. But we're we're doing this to the glory of God. What what other privilege? I mean, people naturally they they say they're speaking for the president or they're doing this for delegates and stuff like that but we're we're playing for god we're in his orchestra and we're doing this to the glory of god that means something that's that's serious and we have to take this thing seriously because just like sister uh well miss uh, maram said <laughs> we're, we're, we're ushering in the spirit not only that but they got to get to the preaching so if, if the playing is not on point and, and everything is off, then they're going to click off. And who's to say that could have been a soul? You know what I mean? That got to think like that. I mean, you got to think. We're fishers of men. Whatever department you're in, you could be a toilet cleaner for all I care in the church. But at the end of the day, they're, <laughs> whoever's sitting on that toilet, if it ain't clean, they're going to talk about you and they're not going to want to come there. I'm just being honest. You got to be whatever, but David said, I don't know who said it, but whatever you do in the house of the Lord, you got to do it to the, to your, to the, you know, to the glory of God and do it with all your heart. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper. You be the best doorkeeper. I don't care what it is. I know we're talking about music tonight, but again, if their church is a certain type of way and they come in there, just like the ushers or whatever, they're going to, your, their first opinion is going to be of your presentation, whatever that may be. And that determines if they're gonna come back or not. So how are each one of you, what do you all, each one of you all doing to enhance the music ministry at your assembly? Well, at my church, um, uh, I have ordered some tools for myself, piano lessons, cause I'm trying to get better in my craft you know i can never say i'm the best or i can never say anything like that i'm very humble but i want to get better because i want to do it to the glory of god so i've, I've taken lessons in, in certain areas of piano theory why i do what i do and you know just trying to practice on certain chords colorful chords and you know getting with the musicians uh carlos who's our leader in the musician department we're, we're trying to uh blend in better you know and, and just create a sound uh, when it comes down to technology, I, I do the, the live stream and, and, and things of that sort. And I work on the, the audio as well. So I have brought certain things because I'm trying to become better at what I'm doing. And not only that, but I'm trying to get all of us together better. So that's, that's what I've been doing. Uh, I'm, I am 
learning uh, as uh, the brothers just said, as well in, in other instruments as well. Um, and so I am uh, teaching, uh, as Pastor Guy said earlier today, teaching myself uh, more things so that I can cultivate my gift and what I'm doing. But some of the things that I do now is I, because I've been in church all my life, uh, if, if you all are musicians, you know that certain songs, it depends on what what's the sound of the house as we were talking about, certain songs are really the same in how they're played uh, as it relates to instrumentation. And so what I'm, what I'm, I try to teach the people that are learning to play is that most of the time you can take the same chord progression, put it with another song and it matches because it was written almost the same. You have to change the timing up a little bit. And anyone who's not musicians, I, I'm totally off the wall now for y'all, but people who are musicians, you understand that chord progressions are a lot, are a lot alike in whatever, kind, if the song is the same style. And so that's one of the things that, I'm, that I wanna teach them to do. But also uh, I want us to get more into uh, uh, preparing as well. And so uh, New Jerusalem and, and Rehoboth, I'm gonna do more too because I want y'all yeah. to hold me to the fire and hold me accountable so that, I, so that we can grow um, in that music ministry as well. And I'm sorry to cut you, just to add to what, you're, what you just said, I, I transpose and I only know a few keys. So I want, I want to be able to reach out to you and maybe you could show me some chord progressions and you know things of that sort. And this is what I love about coming together like this because you get to meet other musicians and get ideas. And that's what it's all about, getting those ideas. Maybe you can get something from me. And, and you know we just work together because at the end of the day, it's not about just my church. If I could do something to help you to, to advance the quality of your service that I believe that's what it's all about because at the end of the day, it's about building up the kingdom so we can make one sound. And that sound can be, God can say, you know what, I accept this worship. So I'm definitely gonna get your number. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm coming after you, brother. <laughs> Yeah. So can each one of you provide a resource? Because we have a lot of individuals on here um, that's listening, that's watching, and they want to know how they can perfect their music ministry. And Honoree just talked about using this platform as a way um, to learn from one another. So if you could provide everyone a resource to assist with perfecting their music ministry, what would that be? Um just to say something, uh, uh, just a few things. One, Facebook. If you're on Facebook, reach out to other ministers. You know, go on, just type in music groups. I'm pretty sure they'll welcome you in. And, and there's, you know, music groups. Get into a music group and just be humble and learn what they're, and just pick up what they're trying to do. I recommend listening to YouTube, you know, just listen to different worship formats, you know, and just get some ideas from that. Um, there are plenty of uh, tools even online. I, like I said, I, per I purchased two of them. One is um, Worship Worship uh, Academy. I, I paid a fee for that, one-time fee, and I'm getting a plethora of, of skills and progressions and just learning how to do certain things. And, and you know, those are the tools that I have. I brought some other stuff too, but you, you just got to get out there and just search. That's mm -hmm. all I can tell you. Get out there and search. And when you open up one door, it's amazing because once you dive in, other doors will start opening up for you. You start meeting people, you start uh, communing with people, and then it's just, you're there. And then, and then it just, you start to start learning. But again, if you don't knock, if you don't open up that door, mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you're not going nowhere. You, you got to put in the work. And it's not going to happen overnight, I tell you that. You got to put in the work. You got to put in the practice. You got to rehearse. You got to get with other people. So that way you learn how to blend in with the band because you don't want to play too high. You don't want to play too low. You don't want to overdrown the other musician. You want to be able to synchronize and come up with a sound that is going to be acceptable. And there is a sound that is acceptable and there's a sound that is just not acceptable. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn that. I can't sit up here and tell you, you got to learn it because how you... Uh, gain that knowledge is how you gain it, and it might not be the same way I perceive it. So you gotta find your 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 um what's that word I'm looking for? You gotta find your your fix. You gotta find out what works for you, and you do it. You just gotta put in the work. Uh, 
as what was already mentioned, some resources are like, okay, so for me as a, um, a pianist, um, YouTube is very instrumental because if there's a particular song that you're trying to learn how to play, if you type in the title of the song and on the back end of that say on piano, then you're gonna start getting videos of people playing that song on a piano and then they're just not playing it. They take the time to break it down um, for you by chords. And that's one, that's one resource that um, you can use. And there's a lot of um, software out here that will teach you um, how, to, how to play music. Um, there are music teachers now that um, the pandemic has opened up so many different avenues that they now teach, they will teach you virtually. If you're able to catch it virtually, now there are some virtual music teachers out here that so if somebody knows a music teacher that's great within this um, city and they're doing virtual, we could pass that information along to help um, our young people and others, whoever's interested to learn how to play. And another thing um, that it, it's a lot of things, go to a music store sometimes and just spend a day in there and see what kind of resources and things that they have in there, you will be amazed. And I wanna admonish you that whatever instrument you play, learn how to read the music. That is an important thing that we need. It's okay to play by ear. And I admonish you to learn how to play by ear because there are some benefits to learning how to play by ear. But we've got to learn how to read the music. That's going to make it easier for, to, for you to teach the vocals. That's gonna make it easy for you to expand and help and to understand how to flow and work with other people that play other instruments. That's gonna teach you how when you're playing a keyboard and you have an organist, that's gonna teach you how to know your place. So you don't start when you got a bass player, that's gonna teach you how to know your place because you got a bass player and you don't wanna be running all over the bass player's area, then they don't have anywhere to play. Learn how to read the music. Le Let me say it one more time. <laughs> we need to learn how to read our music. Amen. Well, <laughs> right. That's that is so vital. And for me, and how my my music came about, I was formally trained first, and so I was in the band. I was in a marching band. Uh, uh, and I learned in band just how to read. Um, I learned music theory. I had a great band teacher. That is, I learned that before I graduated high school. And so what I had to learn when I got in the church is to train my ear, is how to learn to, how to, learn to play by ear and how, how to do all of that. One of the things I would teach people that are learning to play in church, um, first thing, how to learn to read music. Let's, let's talk about that first. That is something going to the music stores, uh, as Sister Miriam said, because there are probably people there that will give you private lessons. Um, that was something that I was afforded with early on. I studied with a professor from South Carolina State University um, in Orangeburg, South Carolina. And so, uh, but at that time, I already know how to read music, but I'm just saying for people who are learning to try to uh, uh, cultivate that gift as it relates to reading music, there may be someone at a music store that will help you in that regard also learning your 12 major scales just get on google that's right if you're learning how to play um as a um and you're, you're an intermediate player uh google your 12 major scale that will teach you uh what what note is in every scale and if the song is in the key of g you know that's the g major scale if the song is in the key of e flat you know that's the e flat major scale you know mm -hmm. it has three flats in it you know if it's in g it has one sharp in it that's f sharp and so all of those things will teach you so that um Right. You will you will be crafted in your gift. Um, learning how to play by ear. That is something that is. It was actually harder for me to learn to play by ear uh, than to read music. 
Um, I'm not sure why. So for some people, it's, it's exactly the opposite. How do you do that? You do that. Um, my private lesson instructor told me by that time I was already playing by ear. But one thing that told me and I was talking to my wife the other day and I told her the same thing. She's a singer. I said he told me anytime you hear music, listen. And that is going to train your ear. Uh, get, get, the, get the piano app on your phone, even if you don't play piano. Learn the notes on the piano. And when you hear a song, try to find the, the, the note that matches with the song. You're training, right. your, you're training your ear. And so that, that helps to, to play by ear. But all of those things, getting books. There's a guy, if you play keyboard, there's a guy named Jamal Hartwell that has a great uh, intermediate to advanced level in learning to play keyboard. If you're a singer, uh, find, uh, like they said in videos, find videos of singing arpeggios and preparing your voice. Um, watch what you drink when you're a singer. Don't drink a lot of things that are very cold. Make sure you take care of your voice. Um, you'll notice that if you are, if you're a singer and you do a lot of uh, cold drinks and, and in church, like we get, we, we like to kind of, kind of growl when we sing and all of those things, you'll notice that after a while, your voice will wear down. Um, mm. it, it depends on whatever you do with your basis research bass players, find people that are greater than you and, and hear their sound and it will train your sound. It will get to the point to the, it'll get to the point where eventually we will know who you listen to because mm -hmm. of the fact your sound will be cultivated by those people that you're listening to. And all of those things are vital in um, developing musicianship. And, and just to add to that, Minister, um, one thing that's very important is while you're playing, some people just want to jump in and just want to dive in and play and not understand why they're doing what they're doing. I, I encourage everybody, learn why you're doing it. That's why it's very important to understand piano theory. You have to understand, because there's a formula to, nobody just wake up one day and just say, you know what, we're, we're going to play, we're going to play C. Let's say C, because that's the easiest scale, you know, right. C, D, E, F, G, you know, and has no sharps. Of, oh, C has no mm -hmm. sharps. It has none. It is. You have to understand why. Why you're doing what you're doing, so you can, you know, just uh, app, you know, use that in app as an application and lay it down. Understand why you're doing what you're doing. Learn piano theory. So we do have a second half to today's session, but before we shift. I just wanted to ask one question. It's kind of a fun question. And any individual that's on Zoom or on Facebook Live that wants to chime in, feel free to write your answer in the chat. But when you think about music, and all of us on here are supposed to be, are supposed to be music enthusiasts, that's what Sister Vanessa said. Um, <laughs> name one song that you feel, it could be presently or you know through the years, that you felt has just been that song that has just completely ministered to you. Oh yeah, I give myself away. Oh, that's a good one. I, I just every time I hear that song, it just moves me, and, and it helps me to get in gear to worship because the song is literally saying as a command, "I giving myself away, so the Lord can use me." So when I'm playing, I, I have to literally hear that song in my mind. I'm giving myself away. I'm letting the. I'm giving myself in a position where God can take me where he wants to take me. That's that's one of my favorite songs. Good one. Uh, for me, uh, it was, I was listening to it on the way I was coming, coming in and preparing for tonight. And it came, well, I was listening to it on my playlist. And then before I got out of the car, when I got home, it was playing on the radio. And it's a newer song. And for me, I don't really have a favorite song with me. I guess that's just my, like the artistry of it. It changes. I have favorite artists. I, I don't think I've ever had a favorite song, but right now uh, the song that really uh, uh, pricks my heart and, and just, just really takes me there is a song by Maverick, Maverick City Music called Gyro. Oh my God, that's my song. That was on yeah, my list. That, I mean, I'm talking about yes. crying quick wow. enough. I mean, got to pull on the side of the road like that. Like yes. that is, that's, that's my song uh, right yes. now. It's Mine's called what? It's called Gyro. By Elevation Gyro. Yes. Yeah, Elevation Church Gyro. I got to check it out. Uh, okay. I don't have to say my song because that was my song, but go ahead, Miriam. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm like um, Minister Ramsey. I really, I don't have, I don't think I have a specific favorite song. Um, hymns 
move me. If I had to um, choose a hymn that I just think is dynamic, great is our faithfulness because anybody that can hit that vocal, you got to really know, be on top of your game to really put that song out. Um, but I am a lover of anything that modulates because um, it's, it's um, funny. So we're talking about the open door. And when I think about music that modulates, it's like moving you level by level by level. So it, it's almost like you, you, you're walking through that door and every time that song modulates, it moves closer and closer to God. It gets more explosive. So anything that modulates, I'm going to take the time to pay attention to that because I want to see where that ends up and how I can utilize that in, in the middle of a service to take that atmosphere through the roof. Mm. So anything that wow. modulates, anything that moves, I'm in it. I'm on it. That's amazing. That's, a, <laughs> that's amazing. Anybody else had one more song? I think if I had to pick one more song, um, I think it would be currently would also be Everlasting God by William Murphy. Cause it's that piece um, when he says, I will remain confident in this that I see the goodness of the Lord, that part right there just takes me in every time. So that's definitely another one of my songs that I would say has been ministered to me lately. Sister Vanessa, did you want to ask this question before we go to the next piece? You know, I, I, I have become like a huge fan of, um, what they call Elevation? Elevation? Yes. Elevation Church. Um, that is unbelievable. But I, I won't pick one of those as my favorite. But I think that a song that hits my heart and has provided so much healing is this I know, whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. This I know, whatever befalls me, Jesus doeth all things well. Woo! <laughs> yes. God. I, that's it right there. That's it. What the? What the? Don't no start. Those hymns. Don't no start. No. That's it. That hammer gets you every time. And then I don't want to say one more thing. Somebody yes. who is sitting at the feet of God right now. That boy, Jonathan McReynolds, mm. that stuff he is putting out there, he is getting that right from the throne. Mm. Jonathan McReynolds, his music right now, his music. Tell me one song that done like <laughs> and have you spin it. You can move that over. <laughs> okay, go on, Hannah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna move on because I could talk about this all night. Yes. So I'm move on <laughs> because we do have another segment of this session, and I'm gonna bring Sister Elena in. So I'm gonna take her off so that she can join the conversation. As many of you all know, Sister Elena just put out. I believe this is her first single. So let's put our hands together for a recording artist. Oh Lord. Head. <laughs> so we are here to celebrate her and for her also to provide us some content of the song the background behind the song and just kind of even give us some content about just the process of now becoming a recording artist I also have your song um pulled up so whenever you want me to play it uh, I can definitely play it for you you can play it whenever you're ready okay I could try to let me see if I can try to get it on now <laughs> You got. You can talk while I'm, I'm figuring it out. <laughs> it's up, but you can talk. Well, how's everybody doing? Good. Y'all hear me? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm sure. just getting in probably 20 minutes ago. I had to go to a funeral in New Jersey. Um, so I did message Sister Vanessa, let her know that I'll be on a little bit later, but I would get on because I wasn't driving. So I did get on while we were still in route. 
So it's good to know you all were running over a little bit. So I didn't hold anybody up. Praise the Lord, Sister Elena. We're so happy to have you. So proud of you. Um, Thank you. And it's beautiful. I, I, I have the lyrics. I got them from Sister Elena. And what I'll do is after this, I will. Oh, just one second. Someone's knocking at my door. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> I'll take my phone with me, though. So you can go. You can keep going. What I'll do is I'll post the lyrics so that you all have the lyrics. Um, and so I'll post. <laughs> let's make sure it's not a burglar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> so and um, so I'll post the lyrics because you know that's important too. And I'm I'm sure that are you ready, Sister Hannah? Because I'll stop yes. talking. All right. Okay. So I'm going to stop talking and we'll listen. And then I know that the panelists have some questions uh, for you, Sister Lena, and you can right. tell us all about the song. But I'll just go ahead back and mute myself, and then we can listen to our recording artist. <laughs> Sister Lena, mute yourself so that the song will come through loud and clear, please. Okay.
still have time, still got fight in me, oh, oh, oh. oh no. Oh. Praise the Lord. Oh, <laughs> just give me, just give me 10 seconds. I was walking down the town one day and I said, Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I got my 10 seconds out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sister Lena, go ahead and tell us the story behind the song. What made you come up with that song, the lyrics? Um, Actually, if I remember correctly, I was driving on my way to um, do a cover song for the recording um, studio that I now work with. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine, a longtime friend of mine, um, and he wanted me, he was like, I want you to write me a song. He said, I, he sings as well. He said, but I have no writing skills. So I said, good, I got you. So. When I hung up with him, this is what I do on the regular. Words come to me, I put on the record on my phone, I'll record it, save it for later, add on, write down lyrics here and there, and then I come up with a song. So like I said, after I hung up with um, the gentleman that I was speaking with, I recorded lyrics that came to me. Then I was like, hold up, this ain't for him, this is for me. Mm -hmm. So. Needless to say, I didn't give that song to him. I kept it for myself. Um, and the song derived from, the lyrics derived from just everyday stuff, me. Some people, and we all, I think, either we have or will or have had it done to us. We count people out or we even have counted ourselves out. Um, I'm not young. I'm 50 years old. I just turned 50, May 13th. Uh, sometimes I count myself out, but I'm, everybody knows if you don't know, you should. I'm a little shy, not shy as far as just talking to somebody, but I don't like being in the forefront, period. I've gotten a lot better. So when I'm singing, I'm closing my eyes. It's not because I'm trying to be all spiritual. It's mostly because I don't want to see you. I don't want to look out in the audience and see people. So, um, I did that even before I came back to God, singing anything. It wasn't even church music that I was singing back then all the time. I still would close my eyes. So it's also become a habit. But now that I'm back where I should have never left, it has gotten to be, even though it's still, because I'm shy and don't want to see people, it still gets me in the mindset that I ain't singing to y'all anyway, even though I am singing to you, it's about God. So again, the, the, the lyrics came from situations that I've been through, situations that I may have even put other people through. We tend to count people out. Yeah, we see, we can only go by what we see and what we know, but we have to remember as long as God is in it, that if he hasn't said, I'm done, then we shouldn't either. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you talk a little bit about this journey to becoming a um, recording artist? Because I'm pretty sure this just didn't happen overnight. Well, no. I actually recorded two full CDs before this, but it was just done in somebody's basement. No one that was affiliated with the actual. And this isn't a big time record label, but it is what it is. But the first two that I recorded was just done in somebody's basement and we put it out on our own. Um, so I'm not new to recording in a studio, but this has taken me to a, a higher level, I would say. The music is getting out there. It's been put on over 50 um, music sites, I believe. So um, yeah, that's my journey. When I first came back to God, which was probably in 2012, I believe, shortly after that, I wrote a song called um, So Glad He Did. So I contacted a friend of mine. I used to be in a group with him, gospel group. Um, 
I want him to put some music to it. So that's how I first knew that I could write lyrics. So that's how it started. What advice would you give anyone who is looking to get into the music industry? Oh, I need some of that advice. <laughs> I, I nowhere near made it and truth be told, I ain't worried about making it. I, I wanna go wherever God wants me to go. If this is it, I'm okay with it. I'm not one of those people that's looking for stardom. But should it happen, I'll gladly accept it. But that's not my main agenda. I'm just doing what I believe that God wants me to do at the moment. I believe he gave me a gift and I'm just trying to use it for his glory. So I need that advice, but I will say this, just follow your heart and stay true to yourself because people used to tell me all the time and believe y'all, believe you me, I don't think that I'm the greatest singer. I know that I'm not the greatest singer. I know I can hold a tune, but there's a difference when God is in it. So people tell me all the time, oh, you should do this, you should do that. I'll be like, I don't know about all of that because shyness doesn't get it when you're going to be up there in front of people. I have 0% stage presence. So, but again, I, I, some advice I could give and take for myself is to just be in a position to allow God to lead you wherever he would have you to go because the music industry is something else. They want to change you. They want you to do things that is against you, not only against what you believe in, but what God believes in. So I used to always say, no, nah, that ain't for me. But again, if God shall allow it to go that far, then I'm going to stick with him and I'm going to stick to my guns and continue to do things how I see fit that I believe that God will be pleased with. Panelists, do you guys have any questions for Sister Elena? Absolutely. <laughs> Sister <laughs> Elena, yes. let me begin by telling you, I am so excited about your accomplishment at becoming a recording. You are a real full-fledged recording artist. I went to Apple Music and typed in your name and it yeah. dropped down. You Crazy. are the real <laughs> thing. I yes. downloaded your music. I'm so excited because I have always believed that within our organization, we could have a record, we could have recording yeah. artists. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate your work ethic and your making this happen because you the real deal. You, we have a real recording artist and I'm excited about that. I can, I have you at the Stellas. The, I was thinking about you oh, today. You well, want to, I have you at the Stellas. Let me tell you, when, your, when your phone rings, answer it because when Kurt, is, Kurt Franklin is on the other end and he said he, want, he has a song he wants you to sing, take me with you. When you go to that session, just take me uh, with All right, me. I'm going to hit you up. Now you I'm answer your call when I come home. I'm be your publicist. <laughs> and it's going to be on Messenger because I don't have your number, okay? Take me to see Kurt. I, yeah. I, I carry the bag. I got you everywhere. I'm excited <laughs> about this. And we're talking you. about open door. Wow, you have walked through the door. And I see so many other things. We, we can have some professional NFL players, WNBA, NBA yeah. players in this organization. We got a real-time recording audience. All and I right. guess I'm supposed to ask you a question, <laughs> right? <laughs> so excited. Like, this is amazing. I always knew it could happen, and it has happened. You're a real-time recording artist. Now play. Well, now play yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do I did, have, you have a question, Sister Miriam. I do have a question. <laughs> okay. So, with your um, new contract with your um, label, um, like, do you now, like, what kind of thing do you do? You owe them an album now? Like, what's your process with working with them? No, um, it's really not a contract. Okay, it's considered an agreement. 
okay. a contract I couldn't get out if I wanted to until the allotment of that contract was carried out. With this right. agreement, right. I could wake up tomorrow and say, I ain't feeling this. Okay. And we just go our separate ways. Okay. Um, it's basically preparing me for something bigger, should something bigger come our way. It's cheaper for me to work with them because I have an agreement with them. They don't charge me as much as they would just charge someone that's just coming to record a song. So in that regard, it's a contract, but it's not a contract again, because I'm not bound to it. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Well, first I want to say congratulations Congratulations. Uh, I, and I didn't even, go, I didn't go on Apple Music. I used YouTube Music and you popped up. And so I guess that's one yeah. of the 50. I mean, you're all over the place, you know, just, <laughs> just, I, I said, when she, when you, when you go to Kirk Friend, just let me carry the bags. I'll, I'll carry the bags when you go. Uh, but I also, I want to commend you on your, your lower bottom range. Just, it, it blesses me that, that, that bottom range that you have, that blesses me. My yeah. question I want to, to ask you is, uh, the process of writing a song, is that is that something that, I know you say you do it all the time, but are there songs that takes years to write? Have you ever started a song that maybe you, you thought and you may write a song quickly, but maybe it took a couple of years to write the song and you were kind of intentional knowing that it was going to take a little while. Have you ever had to write a, did a song like that? Not yet. I, I've had dreams and, and I'm not exaggerating where I wake up and I'd be like, oh, I got to remember what I just dreamt. I could hear this song and I know it's not a song that's already out there. And I get up and I get my phone and I sing it just how I remember it and sing it for later. later. Sometimes that's just how it happened. Or again, like I'm just driving down the road, road and the song, something comes to me and I'll, I can't jot it down because I'm driving. So I'll push record on my phone and I'll record it. So there's and never the same Go ahead. And the same, the same thing as well, because as a musician, I think maybe Sister Mary can attest to this and, and Brother Hector, sometimes we hear, uh, you know, things that we have to record. Now, is that something that, has, has there ever been a time where you where you lost it and you're, and you're like, oh my God, it won't come back. I got the Holy Ghost, but it won't come back to my remembrance. And you have to kind of just wait till it comes again. Has that ever happened to you? Um. I would say no, because like I said, if I'm able to, and I always have my phone on me, I push record. That's why I do it. If I wake up and I still have it on my mind, I'll be like, oh, I got to get this because, yeah, I know I'm going to forget. So I get, I press record and I record it. So I have the melody that's in my head, you know, down and, and, and that's just it. And I've always wanted to play piano, but I never, I don't think I've have the patience for it <laughs> I was like gosh if I could just play my own music because I hear the music in my head like I play piano like the recording studio that I'm working with now this song has been in the works probably for before COVID really hit I, I'm just using March 13th because that's when our job officially shut down where you couldn't couldn't come in in person so that's been almost a year and a half or it has been a year and a half so it was in the works since a little bit before that. And I was trying to get the guy to pick it up. He, he just wasn't, I said, no, that, that's not it. So I went to my cousin, Minister David Watts. He just knows me like that. So um, I sang it for him. Then one party couldn't really get. So he came over on a Sunday it was and um uh, I sang it for him again and he picked it right up then and there. He said, okay, I got you. And that's it. I was like, that's it. That's what I was hearing. So. And one, one more question, if I may, Sister Hannah. You, there was a, on your, on your hook, uh, is that your voice stack or do you have that's, singers? That's me and my daughter, Najea. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I had that question when I was listening to it today. I said, I wonder if she stacked, if she stacked her voice or did, did she have other singers? I, I, I sang like the alto note and the the out the um tenor note, and my daughter sang uh like the soprano. Hmm. 
So there was a question in the comments um, just referencing some of the other songs that you have wrote. Um, are individuals able to get those songs as well? Not through any of the um, music sites, because again, it was never put out to that extent. But if anyone would like a CD, <laughs> I could try to get some, but no try, I could get some burnt and try my best to get it to them. They can look me up on Facebook, Instagram, hit me up and I, we can do it that way. But like I, none of that past music is on any sites. So I do have a question because um, we talked about gifts this morning. When did you realize you had the gift? To sing? To sing, to write. Well, I'd say to sing. I'd say to sing when I was young. I know my mom, she joined church when I was around six. Little church in Warwick, Delaware. Still the same church that we're in now, but it was located in Warwick, Delaware. And I'm thinking maybe eight or nine. I had this small part in a song everything's gonna be all right i don't know who sings the song everything's gonna be all right. after the storm cloud path oh. i would say say everything then i knew so i've been singing for a while i don't remember ever singing singing that young except for that one experience but um yeah i've been singing for a while but far as writing I remember in school, and it had nothing to do with music. I had a, uh, I believe it was an English teacher that asked me to stay after one day. He said, you know, you have a special way of expressing yourself through writing. I was like, oh, really? He said, you don't say stuff or you don't write stuff how other people do. You say the same thing, but you write it differently. I was like, all right. So that's when I knew that I had something with writing. But as far as writing a song, it was just as I said earlier, when I came back to God and I wrote that song called So Glad He Did, then I knew I could write a song. Anybody else have any questions for Sissy Elena? Can you just let everyone know how they can get access to your music? Apple Music, you can purchase it. I believe it's 99 cents. Or if you would like a CD in your hand, again, you'd have to contact me. Um, I did have a batch that I picked up on Tuesday and it's pretty much gone, but I can get more. So if anyone would like one, hit me up on Instagram or um, Facebook and we can make it happen. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I think that sums up. Again, let's put our hands together one more time for Sister Elaine and congratulate her on this awesome accomplishment. Because um, not only is it an accomplishment for her, but it's an accomplishment for us as well. So we all one body. So we are appreciating Sister Elaine and her gift. I'm going to turn it over to um, Evangelist Diggs. Um, or who should I turn it over to now? Praise the Lord. Thank God for our panelists tonight. Thank God for our discussion about music. Our topic tonight was about this is the year that to come forth. And they certainly talked about, and certainly in the song that we just listened to, that uh, music definitely provides opportunities for breakthroughs, for deliverance. So you can listen to a song and you know don't count me out. Doesn't matter what I look like. Don't count me out because God says that I'm going to win. So we are so grateful to that, grateful for our scripture reference tonight to know, and music teaches us this as well. When we come to the house of the Lord, no matter how broken we are, no matter, no matter how bad we are, no matter what happens, if we allow ourselves to be ministered to, we can come forth. And then our scripture tonight, even after they had been beaten, they were not broken. And when the angel came to deliver them, and when God said, it's time to be delivered, they went right back to preaching the word. And that's what we need to do. 
when we leave after being minister too, how about we walk right back into doing what God desires of us? Let me make an announcement and I'm going to turn it over to, um, I'll turn it over to uh, Bishop Wilson and I believe he wants to hear from Bishop uh, Carr because I see both of them tonight. So I'm going to just make this announcement tomorrow morning. We're going to have a discussion about the role of young people uh, in the pandemic era. And I'm going to invite youth leaders to participate. If you want to participate, please inbox me tonight. Uh, if you want to participate in the discussion, inbox me tonight. Um, also, uh, we have not asked for an offering, uh, but it is offering time. This is a meeting and we give all churches. Um, you should have received your report forms. And uh, for the offering, I'm going to make a suggestion for you. And I know that we have the information where you can give uh, uh, electronically. I want to. Um... Oh, there it is. Awesome. You can still hear me, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to make a suggestion. We've had, or we're going to have by the end of this meeting, Lord willing, we will have three evening services and two day sessions, three evening services and two day services. Uh, I would suggest uh, if it is more convenient for you to give your offering for the meeting. So instead of saying, I'm gonna, you know, if you give Friday and you give Saturday, please feel free to give for the meeting. Um, that is three evening services sessions and two day sessions feel free to give for the evening. And then remember on the last night of the meeting to the board, that is the, the when we ask you for a special offering. So please include that in your offering. So they are the ways of posted to give, uh, PayPal, by mail, give the five. So it's all posted, three ways to give. <laughs> so God bless you. I'm gonna turn it over to Bishop Wilson. Praise, praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, I'm just elated over the discussion tonight. Uh, and Sister Elena, the only thing I had to say to you is remember that you got to write a song that me and you supposed to sing together. Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so I'm waiting on that song and waiting on you to let us know uh, when is the time for us to do that dynamic duo, duet together. All right. I loved it. I love the accomplishment. I love all the things that were said today about music, uh, particularly about the participation of musicians in service. Um, it is a ministry and you need to be anointed. And one of the things they said last night that you're not gonna have any public anointing unless you have private relationship. And I think that that goes oh, a plethora of times for those that are musicians because your job is to help usher in the spirit of God. And you gotta be to the point where people can hear what you're saying or hear what you're playing and not worry about what you're looking like and what you're acting like. And so we're grateful, uh, enjoyed. I, I was waiting on Bishop so that he could uh, pray for us. He was supposed to be here. I saw him at one point, but if not, he, he told me to be prepared in case something happened and he didn't, and he didn't, uh, his camera didn't work. He's so coming. Give him one second. Morning. He'll be here. Give me one second. Is he there? Yes. There he is. Bishop is in your hand to pray for us and, and dismiss us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I, I just want to sing one little voice of a song. You know I can't sing, so <laughs> I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living. Whatever men may say, I see His hands of mercy. I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, 
He's always there. He's lived. He lived. Christ Jesus lived today. He walks with me and he talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives. He lives. Salvation to implore. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? <laughs> Lord, I enjoy myself. I thank you for your people especially for the young people that will carry this great gospel to the end of time. And in all of this, Lord, we came out yes. only by prayer. We are born even before the foundation of the world to pray for one another to intercede for one another and make this great organization the church of the living God. Father, we thank you even for the president of the youth and all the young people of the church of God in Christ Jesus. Lord, I thank you for prayer. We saw that Daniel at a certain time he kneeled and he prayed towards Jerusalem. In whatever circumstances, whatever time it is. But Lord, right now we are praying that we will know the time of the time. That we can reveal the time. That our heart will not be overcharged with the things that is coming upon this earth. But we thank you. Even for the Holy Ghost, oh God, that is leading us and guiding us into all truth. Oh God, we thank you for the power of your spirit, Lord. We thank you for all things that are working together for our good. Lord God, we cannot die. We have a purpose to live and move and have our being in you. Lord, we thank you for the time. We even thank you for right now. We even thank you for the condition and the things that are going on in the world. But we just praise your name because the earth is the Lord and the fullness there in the world and they that dwell it therein. Lord, we thank you for bringing us out of darkness into your marvelous light. What a blessing we found. We have, we are walking, we are working in the blessing of the blessed hope of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So Lord God, remember us. Remember the leaders of this great organization. Remember everybody in respected places. Remember the people in a special way, Lord. Open up their eyes, oh God, and open up the ears that they can hear, that they can hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Oh God, we still pray that we will know your voice. Oh God, that we will know your voice. And a stranger we will not follow. But we thank you for this night in a mighty special way. Bless our leader. Remember our presiding bishop. Oh God, remember the governing board. Remember the people in the respective places. Lord, we love every one of them. Because they are called by your great name. And we thank you for the truth, because the truth that made us free, and we are free indeed. And we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. See you tomorrow at noon. And don't forget, if you are youth lead and you want to participate, inbox me this evening. God bless you.